1 Samuel 2.30 Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that my house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, be it far from me. Why we read all those scriptures last week and why? Go back and get the scripture reference and you can, you can see why. Why the Lord would say, for them that honor me I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Father, I thank you for your word. It is so precious. Your spirit, Lord. Oh, I want a generation to really, really know you in a way that some go all their life. As even my pastor said, a man that if I said his name, you'd know who he is. Pastors, a church of thousands has conferences on how to start churches. And my pastor came and gave a message and all of a sudden the, it wrecked the house and people were, were dancing in the Holy Ghost as best they could. And, and that pastor got with him later and said, how did you do that? <laughs> Here's a man who built a church and was successful in the world's eyes for many years, but never once had a move of God. Didn't even recognize it. But that's the world we're living in. Lord, let it be not out here. Amen. I want everybody to experience what I have with you already and go further. We yearn for your presence, Lord. Teach us, show us how. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. Amen. So here are some biblical examples of being despised and lightly esteemed. Throw 1 Samuel 10, 27 on there. It reads, but the children of Belial, that means evil, wicked, wicked people. And they were right there in the midst of Israel. Just like even in the New Testament, those that left us were not really of us. Oh, but they seemed to be all gung-ho and jolly for a while. But just because, they're, just because they're among you do not mean they're with you. And here are these children of Belial, the wicked children said, How shall this man save us? Speaking of Saul, when, he, when they, Israel got their first king. And they despised him. They made light little of the fact that there was going to be a king in Israel and brought him no presents. <laughs> Looking and scoffing, but he held his peace. Another example of being despised in the Old Testament, 2 Samuel 6, 16, and then I'll jump to 23. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David. And as the people of the community come through the doors of Redemption Mobile and they looked and they saw Pastor Bobby leaping and dancing before the Lord, and I hope a host of others what happened? And she despised him. Thought little, little weight. Remember the definition of despise? To think lightly of. To raise a head loftily at. To look down upon. She thought lightly of David. In her heart. Verse 23. Be careful what you think lightly of. Because therefore, Michal, verse 23, the daughter of Saul had no children until the day of her death. She did not honor the things of God. Therefore, she was lightly esteemed. You better be careful what you make fun of are you going to make fun of a move of the Holy Ghost? 
the Lord will make your womb barren. And I'm not just talking literally. I'm talking figuratively. I don't care how many, I don't care what kind of plan you have for the bank to get a loan. I don't care what kind of five-year plan you have, how tediously you've worked at it, and how much time and effort you've put into it. It could be barren. What did Jesus say? All sins are, you know, be forgiven, but not the blaspheme of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Seeing a move of God. God's presence moving upon us. Listen, y'all, it does seem funny and weird to those who've never been a part of it, but I'm telling you, you have an infinite, all-powerful, all-knowing, omnipresent God who created the whole universe to fall upon you mightily. This flesh can't hold it together completely and be dignified. I've been there. I've been there laughing uncontrollably on the floor. I've been there, sh my body shaking. You know, we, it's not like you're like, well, I wonder if I started shaking if that would. No, all of a sudden your body starts shaking because the presence of God is so strong on you, this flesh can't handle it. And if you've never experienced that, keep coming, you eventually will. But she had no child because she despised in her heart a move of God. Ah, oh, there's so many Holy Ghost police out there that have never been authorized. They don't have a badge. They're not authorized by God. Going around trying to tear things down instead of trying to build things up. Trying to look for things that... that trying to look for the one thing that's, that's not agreed upon instead of looking for the hundred things that are. It will not come, their, their dreams and ambitions in the kingdom will not come to fruition because that's not kingdom business. Amen. But here's a biblical example of giving honor to the Lord. Amen. Amen. There we go. Second Samuel 7. We're going to read 1 through 5, then go to 11, and then go to 16. Help me, Holy Spirit. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house. Whew, I want to take off and just start preaching. Oh, Jesus. And the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies. Most people, when that happens, when they finally pull somebody out of the miry clay, they go right back to the norm. Amen. Isn't it amazing how we want Lord to show up immediately in our mess? I mean immediately, absolutely, right now. Give your 100% attention to me, Lord. When the enemies were round all about, but what happens when the Lord takes care of all the enemies round about? Then he becomes part-time God, right? Yeah. When I need you, I'll call you. All right, you got a card? Let me have your card. I'll, I'll call you if I need you. <laughs> that the king said unto Nathan the prophet, he said this to the prophet, See now, the one who represented God on the earth at the time. See now, I dwell in a house of cedar. I live in this big monstrosity. I live in a mansion. I got it good. I am no longer out there with sheep dung in between my toes. I'm no longer shunned by my family. Woo, hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Shut up. I've been delivered. I don't have to eat ramen noodles and government cheese anymore. I can go buy Publix if I want to. I've been lifted up. I've been raised up. Hallelujah. I've been lifted on high. I've been favored. I know I'm not as good as they are, but I'm making a lot more than they are. They've been doing it for 50 years. I've been doing it for five years. Got the monopoly going. 
because of the favor of God, because I put on my father's coat of many colors and I wasn't afraid to wear it. Oh, everybody wants the favor, but when you put it on, you're going to have haters. You're going to have haters. They don't like that coat. Roundabout from a home where he was shunned. I mean, you're talking about the, the ten unmet needs for healing the heart <laughs> wasn't wanted by brothers, wasn't wanted by his daddy, was always just sent out to nowhere to do nothing. Brothers went out to fight a giant. He had to stay home. And he was a little gopher boy with his bread and cheese. And now he's sitting in a mansion with a whole army at his disposal. You think it's one thing to be like the kingpin of a gang? <laughs> what about being the king of an army? You think you and your homies, you're tough. All your 35, 40 homies are you're tough. Well, I tell you what. I got, a, I got an army of 100,000 out there. Line them up, baby. Go ahead. You can come out with your, your little Uzis and your 9 millimeters. I got a few tanks over there. Go for it. Take your best shot. Hallelujah. Rose him up. God set him on high. David did not forget where God brought him from. And so many times we forget where God has brought us from. I shouldn't be alive. I got shot at when I was before I moved to Mobile. I picked up a hitchhiker and took him down the road and set him out. And about the time he got out, I heard, boom, my back windshield just busted up everywhere. And I was like, okay, well, that was a 12 gauge. I'm from the mountains. I know what it sounded like. That guy looked at me and says, you're crazy. And I said, well, I'm crazy for Jesus. And he just like scampered off in the field, and I sat there for a minute because I refused to be in fear. I said, do you want me to stay? Do you want me to go, Lord? He says, well, go ahead and go on home. I said, okay. I got home, called the police. Police come out. Got the flashlight in there everywhere. He says, now tell me your story again. I said, I was sitting here and I said, I got shot at. I said, it was a 12 gauge. I know the sound. He said, are you sure that's what happened? I said, yes, sir. Why? I come around and I said, I said, I smell the gunpowder. He says, yeah, I smell the gunpowder too. I said, well, what, what's the problem? He said, look. He says, what do you not see? I said, I don't know what you're talking about. He says, there's no buckshot in here. Not one pellet come inside my car. Jesus. Yeah, and the angle that is at was right at my seat. Not a single buckshot. Tell me what God, God is raised me from hallelujah single wide trailer divorced family on food stamps for a while I own my own home now bank don't own the home I own my home Finally, after a bazillion years, it seemed like I got a brand new car, which is not brand new anymore. It's a few years old, but it's almost paid for. Amen. And so don't be hating on pastor in a few months if there's a brand new car sitting out there. It's like, well, how did he get that? Because he paid his first one off. <laughs> That's why. Of God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's just the beginning. Yeah. My bride wants a beachfront condo. And she's God's favorite. So I get in on that ticket. Amen. And the Lord gave him rest round about from all his enemies. Verse 2. That the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, 
I dwell in a house of cedar. I have brought, been brought from sheep dung between my toes to having a crown on my head. But the ark of God, God's presence, dwelleth within curtains. want what David had you got to do what David did and Nathan said to the king go do all that's in thine heart for the Lord is with thee and it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying verse 5 and go tell my servant dead thus saith the Lord shalt thou build me a house for me to dwell in as as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. What was what, our verse? Those that honor me, I will honor. God's saying, you want to build me a house? <laughs> Hold on, David. I'm going to build you a house. See, all of us want to get on the God build us a house praise, don't we? But nobody ever comes front to build a, build a Lord a house. Nobody does that jig. We want to do the worship time. God build me a house, a house, a house, a house, a house. David never had to do that. You know why? Because David come, Lord, I'm going to build you a house. I'm going to build you a house. Then the Lord said, hey, you ain't going to outdo me. You want to build me a house? I'm going to build you a house. And thy house and thy kingdom shall be established for, for, forever before thee. You hear that? God said, I'm going to build you a house and it's going to last. Thy throne shall be established forever. See, here, here we see once again, you can't outgive God. I'm going to get personal with you, but I'm trying to help you. These are kingdom keys. Yes. And it's amazing how kingdom keys are so offensive to people. It's as if, you know, people are, you know, using the word of God to manipulate somebody. And the whole time the word of God is not there to manipulate you. It's there to raise you up. To be the sons and daughters that he's always wanted. Being children of the king. David's heart was broken. Seeing the ark, the presence of God in a mere tent. David didn't want to see his place of his worship being subsidiary in appearance and subsidiary in grandeur than his own dwelling place. Yeah, it's getting real personal now, isn't it? But that's where the power is. The powers and the principles. This pierced David's heart. God did not throw him. God did not throw hints around. And David finally caught on. What prompted David to do that? David prompted David to do that. His own heart, that showed his heart. Are you kidding me? That, the pre- I'm living in this after what all he's delivered me from and what he's given unto me? And this is the presence of the Almighty in a tent? David initiated this within his own heart. God never sent prophets around to speak in code. Hey, why don't you do something for God? 
No solicitation. No divine prompting. David initiated within his own heart. David was not thinking of being honored. He just wanted to honor the Lord. David was not thinking, oh, the Lord's going to build me a house. No, Lord, he was thinking, I want to build the Lord a house. That is his heart. Does your heart still get pierced when the things of God take a back seat to the wonders of the world? I can go into cities and see miraculous structures and then just see so many dilapidated churches. Does your heart not break? Because it just shows you where people's treasures are. When you can tolerate dilapidation in your church but are quick to make upgrades in your own home, your priorities are out of line. You're meddling, Pastor. The Holy Ghost is speaking truth. Why would it not bother your heart? Would you want to be a king and rule? Well, your heart's got to break for the things of God. Well, I want all my enemies round about me defeated. Uh, but the things of God, I don't know. Well, I'll just wait till, you know. No, oh, this one's getting close. Okay, God, please, now, 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 immediately, immediately, immediately. I need help now. God, David couldn't take it. I am not living in a place of such elaborate construction and having God's presence in a tent far be it from me. I'm going to honor God. I want the best for God. I'm going to give the first to God. That's why all his enemies around about him, he wouldn't come and mess with David because David feared God. David honored God. David cared more about God's dwelling than his own. Yeah, I said it. When you can tolerate dilapidation in your church but are quick to make upgrades in your own house, your priorities are out of line. We make pleasures our priorities instead of making principles our priorities in this generation. Yeah, if God wanted that to happen, he'll ask somebody else to do it or something happen. Then God will take care of it somehow, some way, whatever. Well, he wanted to use you because if he can get it through you, he'll get more to you. We want the to me, but we don't want the through me. We don't want to look at God's house and our heart be 100% in it. We want God to look at our house. Our pleasures in this generation precede our principles. That's why people will do anything and not really have a conscience about it. And the Bible talks about it, having having a calloused heart. Your conscience being seared is what it says. And I get mad about it, spiritual frustration, because I know, guys, I've, everything I said three years ago is happening now because I've been speaking by the anointing of God as best as I can hear. And I'm telling you, and I'm telling you in this season, four or five years from now is not going to look anything like right now. You better start learning how to operate within the kingdom. You better start learning how to fear the Lord again, honoring the Lord, setting your household up in the order by which God wants it to be. Because if it's out of order, it's out of alignment. And there's going to be plenty of people 
that are going to be deceived. There's going to be plenty of people that say they're Christians that go to these churches where there's, where there's not enough power of God to blow the fuzz off of a peach, not enough, word to, not enough word to fill up a thimble, and they're going to be freaked out and wondering what in the world is going on and where's God? And I don't want God's people to be in that situation. But if they choose to be out of alignment, then let's just lean to the left. Let's do what we want to, when we want to, how we want to. I mean, you've got God's kids that don't even read his word. I mean, they don't. I mean, they just, they don't, they, there's no desire. It's just the Bible. I'll go and see what pastor has to say on Sunday when they show up once a month. Brothers and sisters, we're going to have to tighten up. Don't be the foolish virgin. Don't be the foolish virgin. Because there's a time coming when you ain't going to have no oil. And you're going to, hey, pastor, won't you give me some oil? And go buy some. We've been doing oil for years. I got mine. Well, you're supposed to be Christianly and share. Well, they didn't say that, did they? No. You go get your own. No oil, no access. All that stuff they preached out there is just a bunch of baloney. Look at us now in 2029. Look at all the stuff that's going on. That, all that preaching was baloney. And then you go to the faithful and they're like, uh, no, we're doing just fine. Our source is not a Republican or a Democrat. Our source is not a corporation. Our source is not Dow Jones. Amen. People will cheerfully take out a loan and go, a, and go head over heels in debt. $50,000. Money they don't have, really. Barely put it in the budget, but cheerfully. Just go out with bells on. Go head over heels in debt for $50,000 for a boat. But would claim the pastor is a money-hungry solicitor if he asked for $10,000 that they did have for an expansion offering. How much money you got in the bank? I got $15,000. How about giving 10 to the expansion offering? You crazy? What in the world? Quit your smoking, man. <laughs> if they got a boat on sale, it was usually $65,000, but they put it down to $50,000. Oh, I'll gladly sign the papers on that. Pay that money in every month on that boat. Look at that beautiful boat. Yeah, that deli the, the, the dilapidating in, um, commodity. See, no depreciating. You see, right there off the bat, not even talking about honoring the Lord with her heart. See, the Lord would give them wisdom. But they don't want wisdom from God. So they're going to, there's a way that seems right to a man. And they're going to get in financial debt. Bumps in the road could happen. Maybe a sick child had to spend extra money time. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe the family split up. Money getting awful thin. Bank don't give a rip. Pay me. When if you got counsel for God, God would have found a way. If you if you had gave that to God first, God would give you a plan. Instead of taking fifty thousand dollars for a loan on something that's going to depreciate, no equity whatsoever. Fifty thousand off a lot. One year later, year later you can sell it. You ain't going to sell it, but for forty. Another year later, thirty. It's always going to depreciate. You're not investing your money into anything that's going to acquire equity. 
And if you'd gave to God first, he'd have showed you a way of investing $50,000 to be able to pay for a boat. Oh, you don't want to hear that, right? Borrow $50,000 and I'm going to put some sweat equity and I'm going to take this home. It's not much of a house. You know, it's only about a 1,000 square foot. It needs a lot of work, but, you know, the bones are good. It just needs, you know, just a lot of paint and, you know, just some love and care. And, and I'm going to do that and maybe spend a 1,000 or two on the roof and, and get in it in shape. And then, I'll, and then, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, have renters in there. And you put all your time and your essence, and it's going to take some time. You take about five or six years, and all of a sudden your $50,000 is, listen, your $50,000 from that house is paid off. From there on out, everything can be gravy. Now the house that you bought that keeps appreciating is now making you money, and that money that's now that you're making, that money can now pay for the boat payments. But we don't want that. We want quick snap crack. Don't want counsel from God. We want to do our way, my way. Amen. I'm really trying to help you. People put such little value on the things of God when compared to their own personal endeavors. I mean, they go all out themselves, but they find themselves bankrupt. I've never seen a God giver full out, sold out. I mean, I'm, told, I'm, I'm telling you to the T, a giver to God, time, energy, listen, not just money, but the way they want to conduct themselves, their family, their, their finances, their business, everything. I have never seen somebody that is just really hardcore, not the, not the fake people that put on the presentation of it. I mean, I'm talking about from the heart. As the Bible said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their descendants begging bread. Things always worked out for them. Didn't mean there was storms. Didn't mean that things didn't happen, but it always worked out. And they always come up higher than before. Because he will not let his word. Listen, <laughs> he says, I will watch over my word to perform it, but I ain't watching over your word to perform it. He says, my word is a lamp unto your path. You want to follow my path? With my word, I'll, I'll, I'm standing behind it. Oh, you want to take your word and your path? Okay. Now I have at it, Bubba. And the, the ridiculous thing is you think, well, gosh, when you say it like that, who wouldn't want to be on the Lord's side? Yeah. And so they cry out for mercy. And you know what the Lord's saying the whole time? Well, come on over here. Well, I don't want to come over there. God only requires 10%, the first and the best of our increase, but that's not the max we could give. See, that's where you start finding hearts of people. What? The tithe? What? 10%? What's really the tithe? Is that? Oh, gosh. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll try it, test it, and prove just like the Lord said. But that's it. That's it. That's it. You don't want to go over and above? No. It hurts enough. <laughs> it's like, listen, guys, it's like the track or the athlete that when everybody else goes home, they're still on the field. And everybody laughs at them until five or six years later when everybody's going and they're on the field. Uh, the reporters want to be there too with microphones in their face because now they're getting attention from the big boys. So how does it feel to be in the draft, the first round of the draft? Yeah. Well, why didn't the other very talented people, why didn't they put in over 100%? <laughs> Amen. Don't blame the devil. Blame yourself. Lazy, sorry, won't follow God's counsel, don't want to do things according to God's word. Want to do your own thing, your own way, you're in your own timing. And there's other people that have spent 
hours and days in prayer and fasting and getting counsel from godly people in different places and getting confirmation and doing things the right way, putting their, you know, rolling their sleeves up, burning the midnight oil and just going all out. And over time, time, look at your neighbor and say time. And over time, progress starts being made. And before you know it, it's called uh, sin. What's it? Oh, I lost the word. No. Uh, I forgot the term. Help me, Holy Spirit. It's like a wheel. It, you gain so much momentum that you just really don't have to do anything. It just takes a life of itself. Synergy. Thank you. Thank you. See, my God gave me my wife. Amen. To help me in times of need. Yeah. And all of a sudden it has synergy. You don't really understand how, but it just takes off on its own. God, that's how. I wonder what the breakdown in percentage is would, would be with our income. God only requires 10%, the first and the best of increase, but that's not the max we could give. I wonder what a breakdown of our income is. The treasure is the larger portion, and that's where our heart is. David wanted the best for God's house, period. And David spared no expense for it either. Golly, it's getting late, and I'm not even got to the heart of where I want to get to. I'm going to have to just stop here. Stand to your feet. David wanted the best for God's house, period. He wanted the best for God's house, period, just as if your child had something wrong with them and the medical staff said, well, there is something that is very that we have a high percentage of success on, but it's, gonna, but it's this procedure. And I don't know if your insurance covers it or not, but it's going to be about $75,000. But it will save your child's life. Amen. You ain't even going to be thinking about money. Well, see, that's how God David was about God's house. It didn't matter the cost. He was going to make sure that it was elaborate because how much he loved God and honored God. Period. He spared no expense for it either. Listen. <laughs> see, I'm getting where I'm wanting to go. I might give you a little taste and we're coming back next week. If you like it, then good, you're going to enjoy next week. David just didn't give of telling as being a king, hey, everybody, better bring the money and we're going to, build, we're going to build a temple and just sat back and just orchestrated it. David gave of himself. You ready for this? Because I'm going to give you the scriptures where it says it. And when it comes to what today's value is of the gold and silver, David gave $20 billion towards the temple. His money. But you know what? Nobody messed with David. And he had peace all around him. And nobody could take his throne. And Jesus Christ himself is called the seed of. And sure enough, there's not one person that wasn't kin to David that did not sit on the throne of Judah until Jesus. And it's still called the city of. You want that kind of protection in your life? Well, all you got to do is have your heart to give unto God to the things that are God's. You're not going to outdo Him. 
Because somebody who would do that is somebody who has immersed themselves. People that play around with the tithe, their time, their talents, their anointings, their giftings. It's amazing how people are making money in the world today off of gifts that God gives them and they, and they won't even acknowledge God or give anything back. It's amazing. Those are the people that tip their toe into the water. Throw that on the screen. Throw the Yeah, there it is. She ain't tiptoed. Whose hand's she grabbing? You think she's going to be all right? You better believe it. She's immersed. When we can live our lives like that, when we can immerse ourselves and honor God in such a way that no matter what he asks, I imagine she's probably never swum before and daddy said, come on, baby, jump in. Doesn't it hurt your heart? Have you ever had that done with your kids and your kids are like, and all of a sudden, just like Peter and Jesus, Peter took his eyes off Jesus, started the wind and the waves. All of a sudden, they take eyes off of daddy or mama. Oh, wait a minute, the water. Wait a minute, this is the deep end. Wait, this is over my, my head. And they step back. They're stepping back. From, they're more afraid of what will happen to them than they trust you to make sure it doesn't happen. That's exactly what's going on. Because if they trusted you 100%, they wouldn't even think twice about it. Okay. Boom. That's what David did. And that's why God raised him from a shepherd boy all the way to be a king. It was a bad man, but Jim, but nobody would mess with King David. All the battles that the God had him to win, it's because you saw his heart. I wonder if that's why he's a man after God's own heart, because he understood honor. And God said, you honor me, I'll honor you. Because God's big on honor in the kingdom, honor and respect, protocols and principles. Or, he, or the church of today just wants to do it their way. He's not the king of kings. He's the burger king. I'll just do it my way, right away. And if I don't like it, listen, I'll go somewhere else or do something else. You know what that's like? I'm getting into next week. You, have a cons you don't have a kingdom mentality. You have a consumer mentality. I don't like this store, so I'm taking my business elsewhere. That's a consumer mentality. It's not kingdom Music, the praise went on too long today. Well, honey, we're not here to celebrate you. Immerse yourself, church. Immerse yourself. Hallelujah.